Hi, I'm Nicholas Newman, a uh, full sale student on online art history, and we're going to be doing the art and the industry interview today. I have here my uh, guest here, Mr. Tony Hoover, and we're going to get started with the questions. Now, the first question is, what do you see as the role of the visual arts in, so in society today, particularly in your field? Well, uh, my field being video production, uh, I teach that to high school students. Kind of the role that I see it uh, heading and where it's at right now. Um, it's so very common to find videos uh, everywhere uh, on the internet, obviously on TV still, in the movie theaters. Um, uh, the internet is really taking video by storm as far as every website you go to has it. Um, there's a lot of social media websites out there now, um, some that particularly are 100% uh, about video uh, websites like Vine, um, where students or kids or uh, today's youth are trying to get quick little videos out there to entertain and impress their friends and uh, hopefully develop their uh, video production skills. So that's kind of where I see things going right now. I just it's more of a thing that everybody's doing, which is really, really cool. All right. Um, now, the other question is, new communications and media technology make imagery almost inst um, instantaneously available. Do you believe that this is having a positive or negative influence on the field? I, yeah, I mean, things are definitely instantaneous now. As I was saying before, like the social media, um, everybody uses uh, Facebook, Twitter, uh, Instagram, Vine, um, very common things, especially with the youth today. I, I myself am on most of those things as well, uh, just because I like to see what people are doing. Uh, the cool thing about the social media is you're getting to see new videos every single day. Go to my Facebook timeline and it's just flooded with video after video after video that people are sharing with, the, with each other. Like, hey, check this out. It's really cool looking. Um, I saw a vine once that was really neat in the sense that um, it was a kid jumping off of a um, diving board and somebody's hand just reaches in and grabs the kid moves his hand over here and opens it and then the kid falls into the pool over on the other side. Um, so there's a little like a video tricks being done using these, um, uh, these social media tools. And I think that's a very positive thing. Uh, I, I think it's challenging today's youth to really um, see what they can do creatively. What can I do to step it up, take it up another notch? Uh, there's a gentleman uh, named Zach King he calls himself the Final Cut King, and uh, he does a lot of these like Vine videos that are just like uh, video tricks. Um, and he's somebody who grew up using Final Cut Pro and editing software that we use here. Um, and I think he's igniting the youth into thinking, I can do this too. It's, it's not all that difficult, and it's a lot of fun. So I see it as a positive thing, uh, definitely. I, I think it's getting more students, more young people involved in this industry. Do you think that maybe it might take over a little bit too much of the industry? Do you feel like maybe there might be more of an influence than, you know, more of classic films or the newer films? Or do you feel like that will still have the classics to sneak on through as more of an influence? Oh, you know, that's definitely a good, you know, question or a good conversation to have with people. Um, it's changing things for sure. Um, where I, I think we want instantaneous viewing now. Um, the days of going to a movie theater and uh, paying all the money uh, to sit in the theater, you know, it seems less and less. And, and definitely that's a, um, a shot at the film industry to figure out what can they do? And we see that now, right? A lot more movies are being shot in 3D, um, the IMAX stuff. They're trying to uh, do the stuff where the, the movie theater seats are moving around. So they're trying to do what they can do uh, to combat just that instantaneous viewing. And their work is cut out for them for sure. Um, but I, I think there will always be a drive for people to go back to what, what started it all, what created it all. Um, and for people like me that have that foundation of the classics, that's my job as a, a, an educator and a teacher is to get students not only excited about what's new, but how what was done previously influences that and how they can even take old, um, old styles or old ways of doing things and making them newer and fresher, which I think is cool. So, I, again, I, I see it as a positive thing, not so much negative. All right. What popular images do you see that are frequently repeated throughout our, your industry? 
The biggest thing that I see, um, especially through social media, uh, a lot of videos are being shared, uh, a lot of the same videos being shared over and over again. Um, you know, something gets popular on YouTube and everybody wants to, to share it with, the, with each other. Uh, but uh, the thing called memes, right? Uh, you might be familiar with memes, uh, most people probably are, but it's just common images from whether it's from film or from sports or uh, whatever, and then people tag their own uh, kind of phrases to it. Um, the most common one that I, I've seen uh, throughout the years has been uh, the Willy Wonka face. So uh, Willy Wonka, the movie from the 70s with Gene Wilder, where he's kind of making that face where like, yeah, I'm so interested in what you have to say kind of thing. So it's like a very sarcastic kind of image. And a lot of uh, people have taken that and uh, put their own sarcastic remarks and then kind of shared it with the world. So. I think memes are something that are very popular right now, and they're funny, and, and so that's cool, and I think it's something that a lot of people connect with. And it is a form of visual art, right? It's taking an image in, um, using Photoshop to kind of add your own flavor to it, which I think is also somewhat neat. Um, maybe toes the line of copyright infringement there, but I, you know, uh, I don't know the legalities of all of it, but it's cool nonetheless. Have you ever made a uh, meme yourself? I have not. I have not. I, I enjoy reading them, um, but I like to try to keep my um, creativity a little bit more original. No offense to anybody who likes to do the memes, but um, if I did a meme, it would be using my own images. It wouldn't be from something like Willy Wonka or um, anything else that's commonplace. I would uh, make my own faces or... Uh, take my own pictures and put my own stuff, which I have not done at, at, at this current time. Okay, now the next question we have here is who is one of your favorite visual arts and or what is your favorite style of visual arts? Okay, well, my favorite style uh, is uh, visual arts um, is definitely film. I've grown up on film my entire life, just have always been interested in it. Um, I started as a teenager really um, going to the movies probably two or three times a week. Um, consuming as much as I could. Um, some of my favorite uh, artists, um, definitely from my cl from a classic standpoint, um, this is probably no surprise to many people, it it's Alfred Hitchcock. I've uh, grown up on his films um, through my parents. Uh, my mom uh, loved his movies. Uh, we used to watch reruns of a show called Alfred Hitchcock Presents together. Um, so I always kind of had um, a style of uh, making you think or a little bit kind of twisted and um, unsure of what's going to happen next suspense thriller kind of style so Hitchcock was a big one for me um, and now kind of uh, moving forward to the to the now uh, some of the directors that I think have kind of taken that same style and, and put it into a newer sense are directors like David Fincher, who's directed Seven and uh, Fight Club, um, The Game, um, The Social Network, um, movies that uh, really are holding a lot of people's attention and um, uh, giving us like a new flavor of what's going on in this movie. And by the end, wow, how cool is that? Another one is M. Night Shyamalan, uh, really loved um, Unbreakable and uh, The Sixth Sense, which really have a Hitchcock flavor to them. Um, some of his more recent work, I, I won't get into that. I haven't been a huge fan, but uh, his early work definitely influenced me quite a bit. So yeah, definitely like um, Hitchcock, Fincher, and then my Chum one for sure. Okay, and now the last one I have here is how has your knowledge of famous artwork influenced your creative process? Um, in teaching, uh, for me, it's definitely influenced, like the filmmakers I just mentioned, especially Hitchcock, really influences some of the things that I like to, to share with my students, especially when it comes to different styles you can do. Um, one of the moves that Hitchcock used in the movie Vertigo, where he's uh, either dollying in and zooming out simultaneously or uh, dollying out and zooming in simultaneously to kind of give that Vertigo type effect that you've seen artists like Martin Scorsese use in the Goodfell and Goodfellas. Um, I love taking those kind of pieces of art, showcasing those uh, clips to my students, 
and then dissecting how we can do it and how they can use it in their art moving forward. So um, in my class, I like to try to utilize clips of old movies and say, okay, what do you think they were doing here with the shadows? Um, the third man uh, has some great shadows in it. And uh, what can we do to... Uh, show a cast shadow up on the wall and how can you utilize that in the artwork that you're creating now so it's been really cool for me really rewarding showcasing the classic films that I've grown up on and loved and showing those to students and then applying those principles into their new work which is really cool